There is a story, let's call it the Western story. And it's a story about Western Canada as a unique region with its own demographic, geographic, cultural, economic, and political distinctives. The West is a distinct society, if you will. It's a story that begins with the West's original inhabitants, the Aboriginal people who had an intimate relationship and connection with the natural environment of the West, the land, with all its vegetation, wildlife, and soil and water. It's also a story about the thousands and thousands of people that came West in search of greater freedom and opportunity, uh, of entrepreneurship and pioneering, development of natural resources. It's about new Canadians who came to create a better home for themselves and their family. It's about technological and political innovation. The Western story is also a very relevant story today because it explains the roots of many of the current concerns and frustrated aspirations that trouble Western Canadians today. These are concerns that if unrecognized and unaddressed by the federal government and the rest of Canada will put strains on the Confederation to the breaking point. For example, Western Canadians want unobstructed transportation corridors to the Atlantic and the Pacific and the Arctic so that Western resources and manufacturers can move to tidewater from the interior and to world markets. The story of finding transportation corridors is, is an old one. It goes way back to the search for the Northwest Passage. It includes the building of the first transcontinental railway in Canada, the CPR the first transcontinental pipelines, the interprovincial and Trans-Canada Pipeline. In those cases, the obstacles to building transportation corridors were physical and financial. Today, the obstacles are political and therefore require political wisdom and political determination in order to overcome them. Western Canadians have always had an interest in free trade and do so today. But uh, history tells us that the story of free trade is as much about domestic free trade, trade within the West, as it is about international free trade. It was in 1849 that a Métis trader named Sayer was responsible for the first domestic free trade rally in Canada. And there are lessons to be learned from his experience and experiences after that that are relevant to getting domestic free trade for Western Canadians today, not just for Western Canadians, but breaking down the barriers of trade between the provinces, not only in the West, but in the rest of Canada. Westerners today want constitutional changes to get greater equality and fairness within the Federation, mainly through reform of equalization and through the reform of federal institutions such as the Canadian Senate. But there's lessons to be learned from the greatest constitutional victory the West ever won was in 1930, when it got the constitutional amendment that gave control over natural resources, which should have been given at the very beginning of the creation of the Western provinces, to the provinces in, in 1930. And there's lessons to be learned from how the West got that positive constitutional change in 1930, that irrelevant to getting pro-Western constitutional changes today. Finally, the Western story points to two future options for Western Canada. One is to obtain genuine equality within the Federation by the federal government and the rest of Canada addressing these concerns and aspirations of Western Canadians. The second option is if those concerns and aspirations continue to be unmet, that the West might start down the road to Western independence and the future relationships between the West and Canada being negotiated on a nation-to-nation -nation basis. The telling and reflecting on the Western story will help Western Canadians to think through the pros and the cons of these two options. And telling and reflecting on the story will also help us to form the tough and intelligent questions that need to be put to any candidate for the federal parliament as to what is their personal position and the position of their party on addressing these concerns and aspirations of Western Canadians. This Western Canadian story is to be told through a series of podcasts 
involving Western historians and other people who are very familiar with these issues and their relevance to today. To support the development of these podcasts financially and to share your own Western stories, or to simply subscribe to these podcasts uh, when they become available, please visit thewesternstory.com. We hope you'll join with us.